All right, so I've got my buddy Pat with me, and I need him here to give me a seat of the pants feel. Now, my driver's seat I know is bad, as there's a good inch of play, so I know the seat bushings are bad, but I haven't had a chance to check the passenger side, so Pat's going to hook me up. We're going to do a panic stop, and then he's just going to tell me how much the seat moved. Pat, you ready? I'm ready. Let's All right, it. I'm going to have you hold the camera. All right, thanks. All right, Pat, here we go. Whoa! Oh, no, no, damn. Oh, God. Oh, no, 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 no. What? Uh, Ugh. You know how hard it is to replace this leather? Thank leather. God. All right, dude. Get up. We got work to do. Come on. Hello, happy people, and welcome to your Moment of Zed, the YouTube channel dedicated to the most beautiful car in the world, the BMW Z3, or as the folks in the Hebrides Islands call it, the Z3. I'm Mark, and today we're going to tackle a project that is probably the second most common problem on Z3s after the infamous sagging glove box, that is the worn seat bushings. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into that, but before we do, our Z of the week. And this week we have Grant from Pennsylvania with his 2001 three liter five speed with only 17,000 miles on it. Now Grant has replaced the camshaft position sensor, done the seat bushings coincidentally, done the heating and AC control panel, and he's done some cosmetic TLC as well. Pretty car Grant. I'm jealous. I'd love to have a three liter someday if I can't afford an M, which is getting harder and harder. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grant, for sharing your gorgeous car. If you'd like to see your car on Z of the Week, please follow the instructions in the description below. And now, those seat bushings. Okay, so the seat bushing kit I'm using is from eBay. It's the $5 kit. It sold by a guy in Hawaii, uh, $9 shipping, got here in about a week as promised, made from Delrin. There's another popular kit on Amazon, but it's $23 by a company called x 8 or X8R. Uh, again, I read the reviews on it and people said their Delrin bushings are the same as these $5 ones from eBay. So I went with the cheaper ones. Both of those links are in the description. Okay, tools I used for this project, measuring tape, large vice grips, a 16 millimeter combination wrench, large flat bladed screwdriver, thread sealant, a T25 and a T50 Torx, a 13 millimeter and a 16 millimeter socket, some white lithium grease, and this pipe is just a ratchet extension for a couple of hard bolts on the passenger side. First, unlike me, put your seat all the way forward. Use your 16 millimeter wrench to loosen up the seat belt retaining bolt. This is a captive bolt with a welded in nut, so you really can't lose either one of those things. Then in the back of the seat, take your 16 millimeter socket and loosen up both of the bolts that hold the seat to the floor, the seat rails to the floor. Uh, they were easy on my driver's side. They were darn near frozen on the passenger side. And there's the bolts you can see. Should be fairly easy. Then move the seat all the way back. And you'll have access to the two 13 millimeter nuts. And go ahead and take the 13 millimeter socket. Loosen those up. Those were pretty easy on both seats. The next thing you're going to do is lift the seat gently out and slowly because there's several electrical connections depending on your seat. There could be anywhere from, say, one to four, depending on your model. Uh, remove the junk that previous owners left you that they couldn't get back when they dropped it. And then I would be very careful to take pictures of what electrical connections you have to make sure you get them together the right way. I had four underneath the driver's seat and four or five underneath the passenger seat. Then gently lift that seat out. Be careful not to scrape anything. It's very awkward. Put it on a surface where it's easy to work. Go ahead and take out the two T25 torques that hold the bushing carrier 
onto the seat rail. Then go ahead and slide the seat rail forward. You will reveal the T50 Torx that holds the threaded rod to the seat rail. Remove that and then go ahead and slide it back. Now it's only gonna slide back a certain amount. Then you're gonna to need to go ahead and slide the rail itself back in order to release that threaded rod. As you do, you're gonna notice that it's real messy and that you're gonna pull out a bunch of bits of the old bushings, which are gonna be almost like melted greasy plastic. They make a big mess and get everywhere. That's what you're looking at, the threaded rod, and then I would measure that. Some people count threads, some people take a picture. I measured it because you need to put it together the exact same way. Unthread the threaded rod from the spindle and bushing carrier. Remove the spindle, which is the center part. So there you have the spindle and the bushing carrier. Both of those things are going to need to be cleaned up with a rag and scraped with a flat-bladed screwdriver to get the bushing remnants out as best you can. Put the spindle back in the bushing carrier, and you'll notice that when you put a bushing, one goes on each side of the spindle. When you try to put two of them in, it doesn't fit. They're too wide. So what you're going to do is just simply take both of them and sand them down a little bit. I used 120 grit sandpaper. You could use 80. Then press the bushings and the spindle back in. Should be a tight fit. Thread it back into the rod. Measure, same measurement as you started with when you pulled it out. And also lubricate it with uh, white lithium grease, which I didn't do just so it was uh, less messy for filming. But you should do that. I did it after the fact. Once that's inserted in, you'll need to move both the threaded rod and the rail forward together. You're going to try, well, you're not going to try. You're going to align the flexible shaft at the end of the threaded rod through that black round guide and then into that silver drive unit. And again, you're kind of going to have to play with this a little bit but there's the shaft, flexible shaft into the guide and then the flexible shaft into the actual drive. It's a square fitting, so you may have to wiggle it a little bit. Then at the other end of the rail, go ahead and make sure that your T50 hole is lined up. And before you tighten that down, go to the square inspection port and just double check with a flashlight and make sure the flexible shaft is fully inserted into the drive. Use a little thread sealant, snug that T50 up well, no specific torque setting, just nice and tight. Then go ahead and line up the holes in the seat rail with the bushing carrier. Put your T25s back in again with a little bit of thread sealant and tighten those up. Again, no specific torque, just nice and tight. Don't want to do this again. And you do this three more times. Putting a seat back in, double check your connections. This is a great time to have a partner. This is very hard to do alone, holding up the seat, putting in the connections, and then setting it back down. Definitely a two-person job. Good luck. Okay, all fixed and no further threat of ejection for my passengers. I'm very happy about that. If you like this content, please crush that like button below. And until next time, drive safe.